the types of loads td load and static load that means that the load which is statically applied or steadily applied on a body that means the magnitude of the load remains constant it does not vary suppose this is the load this is a member on which we apply a load this is a compressive load the load may be tensile the load may be shear any type of load and this is applied statically or the magnitude of load w remains constant with time does not vary this is known as td or static load second type of load is variable load variable load means that the magnitude of the load varies with time sometimes it becomes maximum and sometimes it becomes max minimum or maximum in other direction for example this is a cantilever fixed at this end and a load acting on this cantilever this is the load w this load is acting on this in the downward direction and the magnitude of this load changes from plus w to minus w so if we take this as positive direction this is minus w the magnitude of the load is changing from plus w to minus w so this will introduce the variable type of stresses in this member in this case the criteria of the design will be entirely different similarly there may be an axial load acting on this cantilever or maybe it is a shaft which is varying from suppose p is the magnitude this is compressive load and after some time it becomes tensile load this is negative compressive load this is positive tensile load similarly in case of shafts the torque may be acting on a shaft in case of power transmitting shaft this is not a power transmitting shaft suppose the torque t is acting on this member and after some time this becomes t in opposite direction so let us take this as plus t and this as minus t so the direction of this uh, torque is changing from clockwise to counter clockwise after a certain fixed duration of time the duration here remains fixed so this is an example of a variable load these loads may be present either alone or in combination that is any two of them or maybe all the three of them that is this is axial load this is bending load and this is the torque twisting moment they may be present in combination all of three on a machine member and this we have to take into consideration generally this happens in the case of propeller shaft of the ship propeller shaft means the propeller which is provided at the end of the ship this is having a fan so this generates a thrust so the axial load tensile and compressive may be acting on this similarly the to torque due to its rotating motion and also the bending moment because of the weight of the mountings like gears flywheel and this fan etc on this so propeller shaft uh, carries all of the three loads in combination this is an example of variable loading so you will study this in the case of this and as well as this in case of design of shafts for power transmission so this is an example of variable load and this is an example of static load now next is next is the type of stresses now first of all you should know what is a stress if this is a member like this is a shaft this is its axis and the load is applied like this on this shaft suppose this is a tensile load p now what this will load what this load will try to do this will try to elongate the bar in the axial direction suppose we take a <coughs> cross section of this uh, member of the bar at this cross section the atoms which are in close vicinity to this on both sides they will be the load will try to separate these atoms in this direction and this is their natural tendency to resist this separation as a result an internal force which is in the direction opposite to the external load will be set up along this plane and this internal force is called the resistance of the body 
and this is equal and opposite to this external load and this uh, force measured on per unit area is known as the stress developed inside the body. Suppose this is circular bar and A is the area of cross section then we can write that sigma or the stress this is equal to the load divided by per unit area resistance this is not load this is resistance this is load and this is equal and opposite to this. This is how we define the stress. Now this load may produce certain deformation that is plastic deformation and may not produce that is the deformation may be elastic. There is a difference between elastic and plastic deformation. We will explain this what is elastic and plastic deformation. <coughs> if there is any plastic deformation then the uh, deformation is beyond elastic limit that <coughs> any deformation produced by this load is known as strain. Suppose L is the length of this member, then if delta L is the change in length of this member, this is delta L, then the strain is given by delta L by L. That is the change in any dimension, not necessarily length, maybe in this direction also, change in any dimension divided by the original dimension, this is known as the strain. Now strain may be tensile may be compressive or may be shear depending upon the time. If this is the tensile load then the stress will be tensile and the strain will be tensile in this direction that is this dimension will increase. If this load would have been compressive that is it is trying to compress the body then the stress will be compressive and the strain will be negative that is this dimension will decrease. And similarly, if this is a shear type of load, then the stress will be shear stress and the strain will be shearing strain. Now, what is shear stress? Let me explain. If this is a body which is capped on this surface, A is the area of cross section. I will show, the, show you the plan of this. That is the top view of this surface. This is the top view or the plan of this surface. That is top view of this and on this area, this is the area of surface A, we apply a load parallel to this, suppose this load is P. So, the stress produced in this body because of this load will be called the shearing stress because what is the nature of this load? This will try to deform the body in this direction. Because this surface is fixed and this has to remain parallel to this. So, this is called shear deformation and the stress induced in this is called the shear stress which is equal to load divided by the area on which it is applied. So, this is the area on which it is applied. This is called shear stress and the strain induced because of this that is measured in terms of this angle. Suppose this angle is phi. Phi is the shear strain. <coughs> So these are the types of stresses and strain which are produced in a body. Now this is only an example of uniaxial state of stress. That is the stress and the strain is generated, the stress is generated only in the direction of application of load. That is only, the load is acting only in one direction. If the load is acting in two di directions perpendicular to each other, suppose this is the x direction, this is the y direction, sigma x is the stress in this direction, sigma y in y direction, this is known as the biaxial state of stress. The shear stress may also be present, may not be present in this case. If shear stress is acting like this, this is designated as tau xy. This is the shear strain which is taken as positive in the direction of positive x-axis and this is the complementary shear stress. This is shear stress, sorry not strain, shear stress 
and this is the complementary shear stress which keeps the body in equilibrium so this is known as the biaxial state of stress similarly there may be triaxial state of stress that is the stress is acting in the th third dimension that is the z dimension as well this is sigma x sigma y and sigma z the stress is acting in z direction also this is known as triaxial state of stress this is what happens in case of practical design problems related to various members machine members or any other member like columns struts in bridges structures structure analysis this is the actual scenario and but uh, for this Uh, design purpose that is for btech as well as uh, for your gate or any other exam uh, you we will study only this biaxial state of stress there may be shear stress acting on this surface or this body shear stress is like this on these surfaces shear stress may be present or may not be present so this is known as the triaxial state of stress this is biaxial triaxial and uniaxial design under variable stresses this is what we are going to start with second topic is design of shafts next to this is theories of failure this is quite important theory of failure you must have studied from this subject as per as far as the marks are concerned uh you expect at least 7 to 8 marks from this part from this subject machine design so this is quite important the questions are very easy if you go through this uh, uh, subject carefully the questions are very easy and all the questions you will do that will be correct if you are clear with the fundamentals anything else kishore or any other student okay this uh, next topic is theory of failure this is also very important questions are asked uh, almost every year from this topic and then next is the riveted bolted and well that is the design of these joints and design in case of eccentric loading almost every year the question is asked from the portion of eccentric loading after this design of gears and design of bearings in bearings you will study only the uh, rolling contact bearings and sliding contact bearings rolling and as so these are the main topics which we will discuss during this time on discussion on the subject of machine design so let us start with and one more topic is left that is the design of brakes and clutches so this is uh, not difficult the questions asked from these topics are very easy you can do them easily but only thing is that you have to be very clear with the fundamentals of this topic of this subject machine design as well as the uh, subject of strength of materials 